Welcome to Dubrovnik, the most visited destination in Croatia. It's famous for its old town section and dates back between the 6th or the 7th century. Is there anything underneath the surface though? It looks beautiful, you can take great pictures, but has it got a personality? Well this is what I wanted to find out and to be fair after spending some time there, I'm not sure it has, it's almost like the place has got no soul. Now you've got to understand that over time it's been rebuilt, it's suffered through conflicts, the most recent conflict being the 1990s breakup of Yugoslavia, where it suffered heavy bombardment. After that it was rebuilt, and which is one of the reasons why all the buildings and the streets look so clean. It's almost like the place is new. And on top of that, all the shops are just dedicated to tourists. Now it might be a restaurant, it could be a souvenir shop, but it's, there's nothing there for the locals. And the more I thought about it, I'm not sure there is any locals that live there. It is purely just for tourists. Now a lot of tourists arrive on the cruise ships. Then they get shipped to, um, to Dubrovnik on uh, the buses. They do their tour, they go back to the cruise ship and away they go. It's almost like they're on a conveyor belt. Now obviously, I'm not gonna pretend I'm not a tourist. Of course I'm a tourist, I'm here to see it as well. And it's beautiful. You can take some great pictures and I have got some awesome pictures of this place. The video, I hope, well, you can let me know, I hope shows it off as well. But it just hasn't got any culture there. I came away wondering what the culture was. Even though we've got this church and it's beautiful inside, I wonder who visits the church for the Mass. Is it just the tourists that attend for a special Sunday Mass, a tourist Mass? I'm not sure. This sign though is a bit of a giveaway. It's like, please do not take a pee at the wall. Well, of course you shouldn't take a pee at the wall, that's obvious. But in the reconstruction phase, guess what they didn't do? They didn't install any public toilets. In fact, there's two public toilets in Dubrovnik. One's on the outside and one's on the walls on the inside. And this is the wall walk I'm doing now. Now this is something I would really recommend to do. This is, gives you a great view over Dubrovnik. Uh, I think it was, uh, you pay to get in to go over the wall and it's like a one way system. So I was there in May, the, the crowds weren't too bad and as long as you didn't get blocked in behind anyone, it was a nice pleasant walk. It takes you all the way around the old town section. You've got some great views out over the town. I mean, you can see all the red roofs, you can see people passing the streets underneath you. I mean, it is a very, very good walk. But again, to a certain extent, even from this viewpoint, it's like you're, again, on this conveyor belt. The one-way system seems to point you efficiently in one direction. It's, yeah, there's just no personality there, and you just didn't get a feel for it. But of course the views are amazing. I mean, look at that view there. That's, you know, it is stunning. And you get the sound of the, the clock bells and the towers uh, ringing. And yeah, it's, it's a very good walk. My suggestion would be to do it in the early morning or the late evening. Even in May, the temperature was probably 25, 26 degrees and we were starting to feel the heat. I imagine that in July and August, not only have you got the crowds, but you've got temperatures that can be 30, mid 30s even. So that, you know, that's not something you want to be doing during the midday. You don't need a guided tour. You can take one, uh, but you can just buy the ticket and walk around yourself. To a certain extent, I think that's more than good enough. I mean, you're there to see the views. The guide will fill you in on the history. Uh, they will probably fill you in mainly on the conflict that arose after the breakup of Yugoslavia and the siege of Dubrovnik. So, as you can see, it's, uh, you have all these red roofs. Um, and looking at it from this angle, you can tell that in the siege, it must have been almost a very easy target. I mean, opposite the old town is a hill section and you know a couple of tanks or artillery up there must have wreaked devastation down here. To think it was only, what is it, 20 years ago, it's, uh, and in Europe, is quite frightening. So give credit where it's due, they've rebuilt, they've capitalized on what they've rebuilt, and you know, the Brodnik looks beautiful, and it is beautiful. But are you going there for a unique cultural experience? Well, I think not. Even after wandering around all the restaurants, I couldn't honestly tell you what a typical Croatian or Dubrovnik meal is. Everything seemed, everywhere seemed to serve the same thing. It was seafood, pasta or pizza. In fact, I think, I honestly think, a margarita pizza is the local Dubrovnik or Croatian food because I've got no information or evidence to indicate otherwise. But maybe that's me being sarcastic. So is Dubrovnik somewhere that you should visit? 
Yes, certainly. If it's on your bucket list, do it. If you want a long weekend, you can reach it on a, a weekend away from almost anywhere in Europe. You've got EasyJet flights that fly in and out and other airlines. I'm not promoting EasyJet by any means. And it's a great way to spend a weekend. But don't expect a, a unique cultural experience, as I've said. You know, you're there to see the sights and then leave again. It's probably not a place you're going to want to return to again afterwards. But you've seen it, you've got some great photos, you've had yourselves a lovely weekend away. I enjoyed it, and it's time to hit the road on the bicycle tour from Greece to England once more, and I get going tomorrow. Cheers for now.